when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! Hey guys, Neil here from Neon Black Reviews. So tonight we're heading into 1982. I'm going to be talking a little bit about The Entity. Uh, this one was directed by Sidney J. Fury, and it stars Barbara Hershey and Ron Silver. Uh, the story here is actually fairly simple. Uh, Barbara Hershey plays the character of Carla, who is a single mother of three children, uh, two younger girls, and uh, her oldest son uh, is a teenager. Uh, and she uh, just suddenly out of nowhere finds herself the target of this uh, pretty vicious uh, unseen paranormal force. Uh, this film really uh, just hits the ground running. Uh, we don't get the uh, standard, you know, bumps in the night uh, haunting kind of things. Uh, just in the first probably, I mean, five or so, five minutes or so, um, you know, when we're still just kind of, you know, getting introduced to everybody uh, Carla is uh, suddenly just uh, violently raped in her bedroom, uh, again, by this unseen force. And, of course, you know, this is a pretty scary event for her. I mean, she has no idea uh, what the hell is going on. Uh, but she grabs the kids, uh, they jump in the car, and uh, they head over to a, a friend's house uh, to spend the night. Uh, and then her friend, uh, you know, suggests that uh, she needs to go see someone, uh, you know, about what happened. Um, just, you know, the, the, the circumstances, you know, it is kind of hard to believe. So uh, Carla ends up going uh, to see this uh, psychiatrist uh, who is played by Ron Silver. And, of course, the psychiatrist doesn't believe that anything, you know, supernatural is going on. Uh, you know, there's got to be, uh, you know, some root cause, uh, you know, for her to have, you know, these uh, hallucinations and that sort of thing. So, you know, it's something that we've all seen before, uh, you know, in any number of supernatural films uh, where, you know, nobody really believes uh, that anything is actually going on. But uh, it isn't too long into the film where uh, at least her children definitely start to believe uh, because this entity uh, rapes Carla in front of them uh, not too long after uh, the initial, uh, initial opening scene of the film. Uh, so it just kind of goes from there. Uh, again, it's a pretty simple story. Uh, it is, you know, something uh, that we've seen many times now, uh, you know, in the 40 plus years that have come and gone since 1982. So, um, but one thing, again, that just uh, really uh, sets this one apart from, you know, at least most of the supernatural films that I have seen uh, is just the violent nature of, uh, you know, whatever this thing is. And the film doesn't give any explanation as to, you know, why this might be happening uh, or what this thing actually is. Um, you know, it's just uh, one of those uh, where, you know, you see what's going on on the screen. Um, it does kind of play around, um, you know, a little bit with, uh, you know, is this actually just all in Carla's head? I mean, you know, the psychiatrist does make sense. I mean, you know, he's kind of reacting the way, you know, people in the real world actually would. Um, you know, especially someone like me who doesn't believe in the supernatural. I mean, you know, if somebody, you know, one of my friends, I don't care how good of a friend they are, if they came up to me and told me a story like this, I mean, I'd, I, be, I would believe that they believe <laughs> that something happened to them. But I mean, I just have to see it for myself, to be honest with you. So, you know, even though, uh, you know, these kind of characters, you know, when you're watching a movie like this, you know, they're, they're kind of frustrating because, I mean, you know, we as the audience know that there's something going on. And regardless of whether I believe it, you know, in the real world or not, you know, I mean, I like, you know, sitting down and watching Super supernatural horror films and of course i'm behind the protagonist i'm like yeah there's something going on you idiot why can't you just get it through your head and actually you know give this woman the benefit of the doubt you know uh it, it's it's a, it's a weird kind of paradox or whatever you call those things uh for me because yeah i mean he's acting just like i would but yet i'm frustrated uh at him for for acting the way that i would act so uh that's one of the reasons i guess i kind of like supernatural horror films i mean outside of slashers i mean super 
supernatural horror films is probably my second favorite uh, subgenre of horror. I really do like these things, even though, again, it's not something that, you know, I'm not afraid of something like this happening to me, you know, in real life, you know, after the movie's over and I turn out the lights and, you know, have to try to go to sleep. Yeah, it doesn't bother me, but, uh, but yeah, I do, I really do enjoy uh, these types of films. And the, and the entity is, uh, it's one of the better ones that I've ever seen. Now, this is one that technically this is the, uh, the first time that I have ever watched this film. Um, but I have seen, um, you know, clips from it. Um, and you know, if you haven't seen it, um, this is the film you've probably seen in some type of montage or you've seen, you know, still photographs of it, um, you know, for various, you know, supernatural movie lists or things like this. It's the one where the, you've got a woman that is naked on the bed and you can see like, you know, her boobs being pressed in, like as somebody, you know, is kind of fondling her. Uh, yeah, this is that film. Uh, and I had seen, you know, those clips, uh, before, uh, and I'd seen just bits and pieces of it, um, just, you know, over the years in various things. But again, this was the, the first time I've ever sat down and watched the whole thing. And I mean, I'm going to tell you, this is a really good film. I think the best way to, to, to describe it, um, it's like the uh, not safe for kids version of Poltergeist, um, because that's what the uh, uh, they do bring in, you know, paranormal investigators from the university. Uh, they come into Carla's house, you know, um, to, to do a, an investigation. Um, but the whole uh, movie doesn't take place in her house. Uh, it takes place in, in, in other things as well. Um, but this is what they um, determined this thing is, probably is a poltergeist. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, poltergeist uh, came out in 1982 as well, right? If not, it was about this same time. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you got a, uh, again, you know, you got, you know, two similar films that are coming out, uh, you know, in relatively, uh, you know, the same time span. But, uh, but yeah, like the entity is a, um, the R rated version of Poltergeist. Uh, Cause again, uh, the, the only thing that this, uh, this Poltergeist or, you know, paranormal entity, this unseen force, whatever you want to call it, uh, all he wants to do is rape this woman and slap her around a little bit. I mean, he does, you know, shake furniture and blow out windows and things like that as well, you know, to make his presence known. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, he's a very uh, violent, uh, you know, entity, whatever, whatever it is that he actually is. Um, but I do like the, the aspect of it that, you know, they, they don't explain it. Uh, you know, it's up to you to, you know, to provide your own, you know, explanation as to, you know, what this thing is and why all this may be happening. Um, but it's a, it's a well done film. Um, the special effects are pretty good. Um, you know, especially considering all the things that they were doing in this film. Um, some of them don't hold up as well today, um, you know, because it was 1982. There's some, you know, some electricity type effects uh, where, you know, you see electricity crackling just in the air, uh, you know, out of people and off of things and things like that. And that looks a little cheesy uh, by today's standards. But I mean, again, you know, um, even a, a film as great as Poltergeist is, you know, is as awesome as some of those special effects were. I mean, it does have some cheesy looking stuff in it, too. And the entity is no exception. I mean, again, you know, you're watching a film that is over 40 years old. So you have to go into it, you know, with a little bit lowered expectations when it comes to, you know, spectacular uh, special effects. Now, I could be wrong, uh, but I do think uh, as I was kind of glancing at the uh, end credits uh, while, every, you know, kind of looking at my phone and, you know, looking at the credits, uh, that Stan Winston was involved with this film. So I think uh, the, the special effects are, are his work. So uh, that would explain why uh, most of them are, are, all of them, be honest with you, are about as good as you're going to get uh, for 1982. So it definitely didn't fall short in that department. Uh, as far as, um, you know, are there any drawbacks to the film? Uh, the, the, the biggest drawback to this film uh, for me, is the soundtrack that is playing uh, while the entity is, uh, well, doing his thing. It's this um, distorted guitar, uh, maybe with some bass drum and a, you know, a hi-hat crash or something. It sounds like you're at a rock show where they're trying to get the band, you know, or trying to get the crowd involved. It's just like, dang, 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 dang. And it's so loud, and it's a discordant chord on the guitar, too. It's not, you know, something that you'd really want to hear a rock band playing, either. 
it really grated on my ears and it really drew me out of the scene. It's like instead of watching the scene and, you know, and being able to, you know, to try to feel the terror that this woman is going through, I just wanted this fucking noise to go away. Uh, so yeah, that was a very bad decision on their part. And, um, yeah, so I was kind of disappointed that, uh, that that's what they chose uh, to, uh, you know, to, to make the, uh, accompanying background music. I mean, I would much rather hear anything. I mean, even no noise at all, uh, than what they did. I mean, it was just like, like I said, it completely jarred me out of the scenes. Uh, thankfully, uh, towards the end, um, they didn't, they, they quit using it, or at least they didn't use it every time, you know, his presence was present. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really awful sounding to me. Um, I could definitely have done without that. Uh, the other, uh, draw, drawback is kind of, a I don't know. It's, uh, it's one of those things, I guess you could look at it either way. Um, the, the ending of the film was really a non-ending. There was no, um, you know, real resolution uh, to this film. Uh, it does just kind of end um, without you feeling that, you know, hey, this thing's gone or, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, they didn't, they didn't take care of the problem. Um, and not only that, cause I mean, you know, a lot of supernatural films in the, in this way, I mean, you know, how do you actually get rid of something that is, you know, not of this world or, you know, something that is, you know, supernatural, um, and, and know that it's gone for good. I mean, I guess you'd really never really know. Um, but yeah, this one just kind of fell a little flat as far as just, you know, the, the final non-resolution of this film. It just didn't, it just didn't sit as well with me as it does sometimes, you know, when they don't really end the film. Uh, and part of that could have been because, um, at least if you, I, I didn't look it up to see if it were true. Um, but if you believe, uh, the, the, the very last shots of the film, there is some text on screen, uh, that tells you that this was based on real events that did happen, uh, in the mid seventies and that the character of Carla, uh, Carla Moran, I think is her name. I don't know if that was supposedly the woman's real name that they were using her real name as the character in the film or not. Uh, but anyway, she was, you know, at least in 1982, still alive and living in Texas. And uh, she was still being haunted by this thing. Um, but the occurrences um, were uh, fewer and, um, and less forceful. So, again, maybe that was the reason they had to end the film that way is because, you know, the real life, you know, quote unquote, uh, circumstances uh, that this film was based on just never ended either. Uh, so maybe that was it. I don't know. Um but yeah, just the way that the, the film just kind of ends um, without any, you know, satisfaction for the viewer, I think was kind of frustrating as well. Um, but uh, but the, the climactic ending of it, I mean, you know, what they did do uh, w was pretty cool. I mean, I did like that. I like what they were trying to do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, uh, is this, I'm pretty sure this thing's still here. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't get it, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um as far as everything else in the film, though, it was uh, it was a pretty interesting watch. It was a pretty wild ride. I definitely enjoyed uh, sitting down and watching the entity uh, all the way through for the very first time. So if you've seen the entity, guys, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, before you head out, if you would, smash that thumbs up for me, guys. Uh, that like really does help the video out here on YouTube, and I appreciate you doing that for me. And if you haven't already subscribed to Neon Black Reviews, go ahead and do that as well. Click that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it, and turn on those notifications. And that way you'll never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.